Heart to Art, Creative Conversations Inspiring Working Artists to Thrive. A Periscope show hosted by Net Designs and Anne was here. This is episode three, right? Yep, it's yeah. our third episode. Yeah, hi guys. Hey. <laughs> like Ever hiding behind here? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, using Anne's camera, which is much bigger than mine, so you can get everybody in today. Um, so thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. So hi, I am Janetta. And I'm Anne. <laughs> and we are working artists who license our art and also do freelance design work. Mm -hmm. And today we're super excited to be interviewing <laughs> Jennifer Nelson of Jennifer Nelson Artists. Woo! Most of you have probably heard of her because she's a superstar art agent, um, but for those of you who don't, I'm going to let Jennifer introduce herself. If you just give me one second. This is, I don't know if you can see this. This is Jen, Jennifer's information. And yay! Voila! Yes, the yes, magic Jennifer. of the internet. She's here with us today. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for coming. Hey, Jennifer. Why don't you tell everybody about yourself? Hi, everybody. I see all these little hearts and familiar names. It's nice to... <laughs> see you here and thank you, Janetta and Anne, for having me. Absolutely. We're so happy you're here. This is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, for you guys that don't know me, I am um, an artist agent. Mm -hmm. I opened my agency almost a year ago on the 20th of January of 2015. Wow, wow I can't believe it's been a year. Wow, really? That's fantastic. And I represent eight artists mm -hmm. Anissa McCool, Jessica Swift. B. Brown, Jennifer Orkin Lewis, Jill McDonald, Monica Forsberg, Lauren Lowen, and Victoria Johnson. Yay. Probably some of them are here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm extremely proud to represent these guys in the world of um, art licensing, surface design, um, everything this year from uh, pillows to suitcases, I think. Yeah, you guys have had a banner <laughs> year. You've had a big really? year. Really good. It's been a big year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, like we should probably so, jump into the question. Oh, absolutely. Well, thanks for being here. Oops. And we might have some little technical things, so just bear with us. Um, you know, it's the first time we've done this, so yep. um, you you you're back. Okay. So yes, thank you so much for coming on. We're, this is really exciting for us. So um, actually, I'm just gonna let you guys know out there in Periscope land uh, if this is really valuable and something you're really excited about and you think your viewers will be into. Please feel free to share this. Oh, and people are doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Sharing. Thank you. <laughs> so you, you heard me. You heard me. So um, read in my mind. Read my mind. So go ahead and share this if you can. Oh, that was lovely. Where'd Jennifer go? Oh no! We hear you. We don't see you. Oh no! Really? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Jennifer. Here I am. Uh. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi. All right. Ready? Yeah. This is I, live TV. I think you, guys. I live think, TV. I think you covered your. You covered your um. Your, your camera. Your camera. Your camera. I tried to like because I have my iPad here and I want to look at questions and I was no anyway. <laughs> It's okay. We're, we're all good. Oh, but how do you share it? Swipe left or right, depending on your phone, or up and down, depending on your phone. So and I actually that. forgot one thing before we jump into oh, the yeah. questions. Here's Jennifer's info. Please screenshot this if you want to check out her stuff. Um, it's her Facebook, her Instagram, and her website. She offers a really great newsletter for art. It's advice for artists that she sends out regularly. Um, and she also has an advice for artists section where you can actually um, hire her to do some consulting for you. And I've actually used her before, and she's really great. Also, super exciting, Jennifer has a class coming up on Modern Thrive called How to Get an Agent and Do I Really Need One? Um, and that's March 16th through 18th. And here's the link if you guys want to screenshot that. It's on Modern Thrive. Um, really excited about that class. I think it's going to be great. And I... From talking to Jennifer, it sounds like a lot of people are signing up, so you should jump over there and get in on that. Um, okay, so... All right, so we're going to jump into the questions. We're just going to get started. Uh, these questions came from our Heart to Art Facebook group, as well as Anne and I. So um, we'd love to ask you a bunch of great stuff, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Okay, first question is, we're going to... Uh, talk about more artists, excuse me, agent related questions right now. Um, do you think all artists would benefit from an agent? Uh, no, no. That's probably a surprising answer. Mm. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Um, I think that agents, agents can 
um, make a huge impact on, on an artist's career. But I think that there are certainly artists out there who can be successful on their own. Um, it requires high organization and <laughs> diligence and perseverance and a little bit of a thick skin. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely doable on your own. Totally. Right. Yay, that's good news for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's good news for all artists. Yeah. Because I think there's sort of a mentality out there that I you have to have an agent and then your career is going to begin. But the truth is, uh -huh. all the effort that you put into finding an agent is what you're going to put into finding art directors, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. so, similar skills. Yep. Yay, absolutely. Um, so, from your point of view, what does a good agent bring to the table that an artist may not be able to do on their own? Um, my goodness, probably the biggest thing that artists are after in an agent is a client list. So, and an agent also brings structure. So there's some, um, there are often trade shows that agents are going to be attending that you can't do on your own. There are um, cost benefits of being in a one big group and being able to be in a variety of places. Um, an agent is focused full time on the business end of your business. Mm -hmm. So they bring the expertise of that business professional brain, but they also bring man hours. That makes sense. Or in my case, woman hours. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, next question. Do you look for artists or do artists just come to you? And if you do look for artists, where do you look for them? Um, on social media, blogs, portfolio sites? Oh, um, artists, we're lucky. We're so lucky. Artists come to us. Um, but I'm also looking all the time, too. So um, I recently uh, found an artist in Romania that I didn't even know about before, and I found her on Instagram. Oh, wow. So I'm out there similar way to the art director. Mm -hmm. And um, for me... I think it's an, I think it's Instagram. Maybe there, I, there's many places, but but by and large, that's the biggest one. All right, so. cool. Um, is there an industry industry standard or range for the artist agent split, mm. and and how do they handle typically fees for marketing and trade shows and stuff like that? Um, boy, I don't know if there's the typical. I've heard everything mm. from twenty five percent to fifty percent. Mm. Um. And, you know, I only know my own business, but I can say that I, my understanding is a lot of agents that require 50% or on that higher end often cover all the promotional costs okay. of the artist. And then in a more typical situation, maybe if mm -hmm. the agent takes 25%, they look to the artist to supply as a group 75%. Okay. I, I, but again, that's my own experience. Okay. Okay, that's really good to know. Yeah. So it varies greatly by agent to agent, mm -hmm. but it sounds like the lower the cut, the lower the split, the more the agent might charge for reimbursements. Yeah, yeah. so if you think about it, investment. So if you're looking to, and you have an agent, and that agent takes 25%, that agent should put in 2500 You can see why I keep my math simple. Um, mm -hmm. And then from the group of the artists, so if there's 50 artists, maybe everybody's just contributing a small portion towards that group, or if it's 10 artists, then it, you can imagine how the math breaks out. Okay. So. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, do artists ever, I'm sorry, do agents ever let artists keep their existing accounts? Or existing accounts? Yes. Okay. They do. Oh, okay. good. I think that's a really, really important point. Um, mm -hmm. If as okay. an artist, you have, you're developing your own business. And so you've worked really hard over the years mm -hmm. to have a group of people. Right. I see questions coming up, so that's good. Yeah, um, we can get to your questions too at the end. So we're going to do a Q and A, or if, um, or, if, or if there's ones that you need yeah, are pertaining to what we're asking her. Yeah, sorry, or, go ahead. <laughs> wait, what were we talking about? Oh, I was just saying if they can keep their existing accounts. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay, so in my little world, we refer to those as house accounts. So um, if I were to bring on Anne and she had target as her house account then that every time a target project would come in through me for Anne, i would just refer her directly oh okay great nice that's, so those are that's all fair. outlined in the contract at the very beginning 
Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, look, we, Jennifer, sorry, but, just see two. Yeah, I just saw that too. Two of Jennifer's artists are on here, Lauren and uh, and um, Jennifer Orkin Lewis nice. for August Run. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so what was our next question? And if an argent, <laughs> argent. <laughs> argent, if an artist and an agent part ways, how are the in progress projects handled? Well, the um, the good thing is there's it, well, it, again it depends, but typically there's a transition period. So you would say, um, I don't know, if you've been with an agent for a year, say there's 90 days or something like that, and so you would you would have an initial period where you're quieting down your jobs, and then you have a period of time after which, if a project comes in that's not a house account, the agent still takes a percentage. Okay. But then after that point, the in, in my world, after that point, then the artist receives an entire list of who all their client contacts have been when they were at the agency, and then they um, handle everything on their own. Okay. So, oh, okay. okay. That's really great to yeah. know. Yeah. It's like, it seems like hasn't a happened yet, so I'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> Okay, we're going to jump into some art-related questions. Uh, First one here is, what are the components of a strong collection in your mind? Uh, Does art need to be in collections to be licensable? So, does art, does art need to be in, yeah. Does art, does that mean? No. Yeah, no, uh, not art, okay. Are you saying, do you need a, does your artwork need to be in a group? Yeah, 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 I got it. (laughs) No, in fact, um, of my group, people work in all kinds of different ways. Um, uh, B. Brown in particular is wonderful at coming up with sort of a master pattern, and then she'll provide a couple of coordinates that go with it. Mm -hmm. But then in some cases, she'll just do a piece of spot art. So Mm -hmm. that depends. And Jennifer who could probably chime in here, almost never does coordinates for her pieces. Oh. So, um, and in, but both cases are successful. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And how do you determine if art is licensable or not? Like what makes art licensable? Okay. So hmm. I'm not, I'm not um, a master at this, but my take on it, when I look at, say we're bringing on a new artist, What I do is I look at, here are maybe the nine or ten areas where we have good, strong connections with clients, say, stationery and home decor and, and I don't know, editorial. And then I look at that artist and I say, not only do I love their work, because that's why I'm considering them in the first place, but does their work, could I see that their work could be applicable in those key places where I already have Mm -hmm. client contacts? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So it's sort of like, and it's really basic. I draw, I I have a grid with all my clients in different categories Mm -hmm. and I printed it out and then I make like little thumbnail, um, images of the artist portfolio and I literally put it on there. So if I can be sure that that person is going to be in at least 60% of those areas, I have a sense that that's a pretty good, connection All for right. me and for the clients. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> is it okay to put artwork you want to license in your own shop, like X- Etsy or Society6? And if not, how do you decide what to keep for licensing and what do you put in your store? On your, yeah, what do you put in your shop? So, uh, break that oh, down. No, I think, it, no, I think it's, it? I think it's fine. Okay. I think that, you can definitely put that work out there. And I think that art directors might come across you on those types of shops. I hesitate to use society six and those other um, Etsy's as promotional vehicles for the artists, because it sort of sends people off into a place where they're going to find a whole Mm. lot of other artists. But I do think it's completely fine to show that at work. You may have a client who comes along, say, for wall art and doesn't want you to show that any longer in your shop. But up until that point, I say the more the better. Okay. Oh, that's good. Good to know. It's really good to know. Um, Is it okay to share art you want to license or sell on social media? And does this bother art directors or art buyers? Well, okay, so let's think about it this way. If you are an artist who creates a new piece three times a week, and every single piece that you put up, you're putting out there, when the the art director is going to see things sporadically, 
So they're not going to see the whole volume of your work in one place. Mm -hmm. I think I have two, I have two lines about this. So this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that it's a good idea to hold back a certain percentage of your work. So when you okay. finally get that person's attention and they want to see more of your portfolio, mm -hmm. you've got more to show. So let's suppose you're doing a whole collection of florals. Maybe one of the things that you'd like to do is just show one, one of the pieces mm -hmm. or just a portion of a piece on your Instagram feed. And then maybe later a little bit more, but you don't need to give every single thing away on social media. Okay, perfect. All right. That's great. That is definitely two opinions, but yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any advice for balancing the need to be sellable without watering down your unique style? Say it again. Do you have any advice for balancing the need to be sellable without watering down your unique style? Um, you know, I think that what's going to sell is what it is that you love to do. And mm -hmm. I, I think that a lot of times people are looking to trends yeah. or they're looking to what's popular right now and, and, and in terms of style and they try to mimic that or they try to follow along in this whole more generic way of working. And I don't mm -hmm. think that that's ever successful. It does come through. Mm -hmm. What is successful in terms of building sellable work is subject matter. So we know that people are going to buy Christmas. They're going to buy mm -hmm. florals. They're going to buy lettering and, and animals, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that a certain percentage of the market is going to go for Christmas every single year. So it's a really important thing to have in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. That. That's great. Hey, That's great. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. We just talked about trends last or a couple of weeks ago, actually. And it's interesting because one of the advice that Janetta and I gave was it's important to know trends and to follow them and use them in your work when they fit with what you do and when it's something that you're interested in, but don't feel like you have to just jump on any trend because it's there that you, if it doesn't fit with what you want to do or if you don't love exactly. painting it and it will show through like someone just said, um, absolutely. Okay, so the next question is, do you require your artists to register their copyrights? And if so, how soon after creation? Do you have them do it by collections? If not, do you think it's necessary to register copyrights? I don't require that of my artist, um, but I do think it's a good idea. I do recommend it. Um, brilliantly, Lauren uh, at laurenlowen.com has a blog up today about how to handle your copyrights. Oh, yay. Awesome. It's really great. I invite everybody to go to Lauren. <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> and maybe Lauren could type it there. Yeah, Lauren, type in your, um, I, your... your URL because I can't do it from here. But um, there's some really great advice there. Again, great. I'm not an attorney. Lauren's not an attorney. But there's some good stepping stones there. And it's not a crazy complicated thing that it's made out to be. But I definitely recommend it, and I recommend it, say, right before a big show, right before Surtex is a good time of year to copyright all that work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. um, and then we actually just thought of a question this morning. It came up. There's this mm -hmm. article going around um, from, I think it was the Surtex, Surtex newsletter, where and one of they, there was three agents involved, and one of the agents specifically said he hates password protected portfolios, mm -hmm. and if he find if he comes He's across one, he just shuts it down and won't even look at it, the artist anymore. What are your feelings mm -hmm. on having a password protected portfolio? Yeah, I don't like them either, mm -hmm. and I don't think our directors like them either. Now that said, on my own mm -hmm. site, the artists have maybe 40 images. Can you believe it when my doorbell just rang? <laughs> um, they have 40, 40 images showing at one time, but they've got hundreds in an archive. So I think it's a good mm -hmm. idea to rotate out the images that you show on your site, but make them all available. Okay. And make sure, oh. again, you're touching those major purchase subject matter. Like that. Okay. Like um, that. But I think that an art director is not so inclined to want to ask permission. Then first of all, they have to engage with you and get your hopes up that they are going to make a commission or make a license. And they, it's sort of like a, it's an extra step, if you will. So my recommendation would be rotate out the work often and don't have passwords. 
Interesting. I'll have to think about that. Yeah, yeah. So I think you don't have to show everything at once. Imagine just showing thirty pieces. Okay. Right. Next month, put in a different thirty, or rotate out ten percent all the time. I don't know. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but once you get that system in place, not only does your portfolio look fresh, but it also looks accessible and it looks like you're easy to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's That's really really great to hear. Really, really. Really interesting. Thank you so much. Um, okay, we're going to uh, jump into some questions regarding submissions. Um, so the first one here is, do you have any tips for artists on how to find licensing contacts? Oh, she, she freeze? freeze. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, she's moving. Hi. It, well, it sounds a little... Uh, oh, I can ask it again. Are you... Bro- oh. Hey, Jennifer. Can you hear us now? I can hear you. Okay. okay. We'll ask it again. Okay. Um, the question was, do you have any tips for artists on how to find licensing contacts? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so one of the most important things you can do as an artist is to get out and shop. And I know that Mm -hmm. sounds like terribly hard work, but get, get yourself out and see who's making that journal that you, that you really love or who's making, Mm -hmm. um, home decor that's just exactly the kind of product and quality that you can see imagine your work on and then take a I'm always going with my camera and taking pictures at the on the back of a journal or on the tag of a tea towel mm-hmm. and yep. coming back and believe it or not go to LinkedIn and look LinkedIn is a great tool most everybody's on it and you can really make good connections that way great hey wonderful um, okay, so what do you think are best practices for submit, submitting to an agent? And, that, and then the second question, is it different to submit to an um, art director? Um, well, it's essentially the same. I think, there's, I think that there's two methods. Um, with an agent, the agent, just like the artist, wants to feel like they're selected. So I don't recommend sending like a newsletter blast to every agent listed do your research figure out do you want a really tiny personal agent or do you want somebody that has access to big advertising campaigns and represents 200 people and you know there's all different kinds of Mm -hmm. agents out there Mm -hmm. right so i think that first figuring out who though what that type of agent is do your research talk to artists that are currently represented or formally represented by that person and get a sense of if that's a good person and then send very specific personal emails to that person. Mm -hmm. Not too often, maybe like every 10 days or something. Just a quick note, like I've, you know, just completed this floral and I thought about you and I hope you're having a good day. Mm -hmm. Not when are you going to check? Who's who's your next artist going to be? Are you going to pick me? Am I the right fit? (laughs) But really just sort of an informal, I'm thinking about you and I want to stay connected to you and I want to have a really positive impact, right? Mm -hmm. And to the art director, it's almost the same thing, except for the vehicle really needs to be the newsletter. You can still send the personal to the art director, but the, the magic, I think, of a newsletter is that the art director knows that this is going to a lot of people they do not feel like you're on their to-do list to reply to. They're dealing with hundreds, if not thousands of images every single day. So they have this, you have this ability to have almost a one-way conversation of visuals that come in maybe every two or three weeks, and you're just saying, I'm here, I really want to work with you, and you're delivering great work consistently, 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 and that's where I think you can make a sort of a tighter connection with the art director. Right. And you can also send a personal email, but again, you want to send it without necessarily expecting Mm -hmm. a reply. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds a little harsh. No, no. Um, not having an agent and submitting to, um, art directors all the time. Mm -hmm. I, Never expect them no, to reply. No, you can. You can. I'm actually always surprised yeah. when they do reply. Right, right. <laughs> right. Me too. So I think Me it too. goes the same for agents. Um, mm-hmm. every, the, everyone in that in that role, because there's so many artists, and yep. so like you were talking, you and I were talking about this, Jennifer. There's so many artists and so few agents mm-hmm. and so few manufacturers that um, they get bomba- they get bombarded with us. So we have to respect that they might not have time to answer everyone. Did we lose you again? 
Yeah, I'm so sorry that to that last bit. That's okay. I was just talking, and what I say isn't really that important. So we'll just move on. <laughs> oh. I think it's important. Yeah. <laughs> What is she talking about? Okay. Aw, thanks for the compliments. Okay, one more question on this topic. Uh, actually, two more. Um, if you have multiple parties interested in the same artwork collection, what is the best way to handle the situation? Oh, boy. Well, that's a good mm. problem to have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if there are two manufacturers of the same, say, they're both, say it's a collection and you've got two fabric companies that are interested, right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Or yep. Absolutely. Competing manufacturers, competing territories. Yes. Um, I think that you have to have a really frank conversation with them and say, I've got this person. They're very interested. You don't have to name names. They're really interested in this collection. I am really interested in working with you. What kind of, what kind of agreement can we come to? And you don't want to play that card if you don't have somebody because that's sort of a jerk mm. move. But I think that... <laughs> Um, art directors, clients are people too, and they understand, and yeah. it's nice for them to know that something is becoming popular or yeah. sought after. Mm -hmm. That's but, great. um, yeah, I think an honest conversation. Just be today. honest. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and how often or soon, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but how often or soon is it okay to follow up on a submission? Oh, um, a blind submission or you mean... Like if you sub How? if you su if you submit to an agent or you submit art like specific art to an art director, when is it annoying to follow up on that, or when is it appropriate? Like, what is there like a general? Is it okay, okay. to wait? So if if there's been like a call for images, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, so if there's been a call for images, I would I would be back in back in touch with them within a week's time. Okay. Right. So like, if somebody said, okay, we're looking, we want to see all of your Christmas, send it to us. I would follow up with them really quickly. Okay. Week max. If however, you're sending images that are unsolicited to them, mm -hmm. I would not follow up on those specific images as much as I would just continue to send new work. Okay. Every, oh, okay. Again, every two to three weeks. It's like, you almost want to bathe the art director. In <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Sense. Okay. Yep. And that's not too much. Like every two weeks I'm hearing from you. That's okay. No, in fact, okay. I, I feel like if you do it more, I mean, uh, maybe three weeks is a good period, but you don't want to go for months in right. between. In fact, I um, suggest to people a lot of times in my one-on-one -on -one that they set up a schedule and they put, maybe it's just three florals and they put a newsletter together and they schedule out a whole six months or a year's worth if they can. Hmm. And it's really simple. Here, here are my florals. Hope you're having a great day. And the, everything's linked back to your site and your contact information. And if that keeps coming and it comes that. in a regular pattern and the work is suitable for them, yeah. you're going to start to gain their attention. Okay. In an email or a newsletter? Jeez. In a newsletter. Newsletter. And mm -hmm. then how many images, people are asking how many images are appropriate to send in each email? Like what's too many and what's too few? Um, I, I, three to five. Okay. Okay. And yeah. single images, not little collections, right? Do you think? Yeah, you, know, you know, I think the thing is, again, it, if you think of it like a conversation, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a little, you're going to, I know it's a one way conversation, but you're just going to like tease <laughs> it out. If you okay. were to say, well, I'm going to, um, here are all my florals from 2015. That's a bit overwhelming. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you can show maybe in a newsletter, some Christmas, some lettering, some animals, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, here's, you know, here's my latest work or here's some images that, you know, yeah. it's springtime. I don't know. You, right. It's almost, it doesn't matter what you say. You don't have to craft it. You don't have to spend a ton of time, a mm -hmm. couple sentences, but every image links back to your site mm -hmm. and every single newsletter goes to your it. Instagram, only social media. I think that you need your um your website possibly your linkedin so and if anybody wants a good mm -hmm. model for setting up a linkedin you can go find me there because every single day i have it set up that i post a new piece of art oh, oh. and that has created a big following for the agency on linkedin just because 
now 600 people are going to go do it. But yeah, it's like, <laughs> but how how is people are using it? <laughs> so that's a really so great tip great. that I've never heard. Actually. Yeah, right. And you heard it here from Jennifer Nelson of Jennifer Nelson's Get the artist, scoop and here. she's gonna regret telling you that because uh -huh. it's a really good I know. tip. Right, right now everyone's gonna do it. Everyone's gonna do it because I'm gonna go and do it. <laughs> You're gonna go and do it. I'll be you. I love to see it. I want to see more art on LinkedIn. All right. My mind is blown right now, Jennifer. This is fantastic yeah, stuff. Yeah, great. Like, I can't wait to watch this back and take some like, notes. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. It's going to be Newsletter Central around here. All right. So, okay. So, we're going to jump into some marketing questions. We got a couple for you here. Um, what's up? Oh, is she ready? Okay. Uh, here we go. How important is it for an artist to exhibit at trade shows, whether on their own, in a group, or through an agent? And do you think it is critical to make it in, do you think it is critical to do a show to make it in licensing? Uh... I'm sure there's some successful artists out there that don't go to trade shows. Oh, yeah. I can't, I would not recommend it. Couple points. You're going to have so much more exposure. I mean, if you're there as in a single booth like Lauren has been for several years in Victoria, you're going to get a lot of exposure as a single artist, but it's a very expensive way to go. Right. And if you're part of an agency, you're also, depending on the size, you're going to get exposure. But if you can go to the trade show yourself, you're going to learn so much. And I know Surtex is charging people to come in and that's that's debatable. But I think that if you can get yourself into the show, whether you're connected to an agency or you're part of a collective, and you can walk that show, you see what other artists mm -hmm. are doing, how other artists are presenting, mm -hmm. stationary shows going on at the same time Surtex is, so like mm -hmm. a good third of our clients are over there. Mm -hmm. And Prince or I mean, it's, you just, you learn so much yeah. and you also absorb so many, many thousands of images. And I think that's really a, mm -hmm. a strong, positive thing. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. I'm excited to hear that. We're excited to hear that because yeah. we're both, we're both doing search mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know that you think it is important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then how important do you think it is for an artist to be active on social media? Does your answer change if they already have an agent? Uh, yes. Okay. So I think if I had limited mm -hmm. time for social media in my business, which everyone should, right. I would focus my energy on Instagram a hundred percent and maybe Pinterest secondarily in terms of clients finding you out of the blue. Um, I, when I look at our Google analytics for people that have not, that I have not solicited myself mm -hmm. and who are finding us, they're finding us off of Instagram directly. It's like 65% wow. percentage. What? What? So I can't say how important that is. Wow. Facebook is great because we know each other and we're in each other's lives. But in my world, I might have 10 or 15 clients on Facebook, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I've got mostly the artists. Okay. It serves a purpose, but I don't think it counts towards my business that right. much okay. necessarily. Right. Right? Okay. And Good Jennifer time. says, Instagram is the best. Yes, I see that. Instagram rules. <laughs> so the more visual plat platforms like Pinterest and Instagram. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's really yeah. easy. And if you do go down the, the Pinterest route, uh -huh. I wish I could do a screen share, mm -hmm. but I talk about this in the consulting too, is you want to, you want to pin your images directly from your site. Mm -hmm. So if you all get a great write-up on print and pattern, let's say, don't go to that site and then pin from there. You want to put it on your blog, put it on your site, and then pin directly to your site. Okay. What we don't want is for Pinterest to work as a conduit to a whole bunch of other illustrators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on about Pinterest. But, um, <laughs> yes, so I do think that social media is important. Instagram is my long-shot favorite, and I think that – you do need to be promoting yourself whether you have an agent or not. Okay. So if yeah. you're on your own, say 25% of your time needs to be sent, spent on social media and marketing. And if you're with an agent, I don't know, 10 or something, okay. but a significant chunk. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really great to hear. This is, this is fantastic. Yes. I'm sure you guys are loving this. We're seeing all the hearts. Thank you so much. Um, if yeah. you haven't shared yet, share this because yes. I think people will really love to see this. Absolutely. And awesome. somebody's pattern repeats that a client found them on Instagram. So see, there you go. Nice. Nice. 
All right. Okay. So now we um, are at the end of the our question segment, and we're going to open it up for you guys. Uh, if you have questions for Jennifer, this is our Q and A right now. Um, yes. Thanks for follow, uh, sharing with your followers. And okay, we're just going to go through and pick some questions here. Um, or Jennifer, are you do you, you want to grab the questions, or do you want us to read them out to you? What's your? Yeah. Uh, what's... I can see them. Let's see. Can okay. our agents help with publishing or do I need a publishing agent? Uh, some art agents can help you with publishing, with book publishing. They just, they need to have those people in their contact list or else be able to figure out how to reach them. Mm -hmm. But you don't need a special publishing agent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone said, how do you get art directors to sign up for your newsletter? That's a good question. Oh, so can I say this? I don't know. I, oh, I just <laughs> on there. I just, I just get the email and I just add them. Okay. Okay. I, I think the, it says uh, if, if it's, it's, uh -oh. it's okay. saying that. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, that it's so true. It's like if you want to go and do it, they don't. So I put them on there. Okay. okay. I think I read that on MailChimp, like the, the, the technical law is if it's a client that you already have interaction with, which is the case for you, Jennifer, when you're adding them, it's okay to put them on there. Obviously they can unsubscribe if they don't want to, mm -hmm. but you should right. not put someone on there that doesn't know you or know who you are and that you don't, right. haven't done business with. Right. So an artist out there should not get, you know, some random art uh, director. No, you, you know. should not, you shouldn't buy a list and try to put it right. all on MailChimp. Right. Exactly. Right. But I don't, I don't typically ask people to go sign up because even if they're people that we're currently doing a job with, you know how your life is. You're so busy. You don't take yeah. time to go someplace and sign. Up right. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. How much of work, how much work should you have before you reach out to art directors? Um, 30 pieces. Okay. And by that, some should be collections, but not everything needs to be a collection. That's That was like the biggest tip for me today. So <laughs> thank you. Um, hey, someone just asked, and I want to I wanna, uh, go back to that really quickly. Someone said, can you send a direct email to an art director? From what I understand, if you can send a direct email to an art director and invite them to sign up for your, mm -hmm. um, so you could cold call, email an art director and send them an email and invite them to sign up for your newsletter. So that's fine. It's not that you can't ever email anyone. The reason you have to be careful with MailChimp or newsletters is because it's considered spam if mm -hmm. people don't, if they're not a client of yours and they didn't sign up for it, that's why you have to be careful there. Right. But it's always okay to email someone a personal email and invite them to sign up for it. Mm -hmm. Correct. I know you know more about the MailChimp logistics than I do. Well, I don't have it, but I, the reason I know a little bit is because I, I'm about to sign up my newsletter, mm -hmm. so I just read through all the, like, Yeah, there's a of lot of legal on it. So it's Absolutely. fresh on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> there was a really good question there. Um, oh, what did it say? Oh, um, you know what? I, I slipped my mind. That's okay. Maybe they'll come back. There's some really... Oh, actually, someone said, um, how feasible is it to have a full-time income working with an agent? Gosh, it just depends. Mm -hmm. It really does. I mean, I think that's as individual as every artist. Okay. okay. So um, some people make a full-time income on part-time hours. Some people work way, way hours that's and amazing. make a part-time income. That's just so variable. I think okay. it's, that's hard to say. Okay. I can say that having an agent is not a necessarily a gauge of instant success. It's not the magic switch that you know, sometimes people think that it is. Mm -hmm. it can definitely be an asset to your business, but it's not going to make your business. Right, right. You, you've got a, there's a lot of hard work to be successful, mm -hmm. whether you have an agent or not. There's a, you've got to work really hard and yeah. create a lot of art and put yourself out there and stuff. Someone said, are snail mail postcards still a, a good thing to do? Yeah, you know, we do them, um, we do them every I guess we do them four times a year, right before the big trade shows and then one time in August. Mm -hmm. um, and they are great. I They're very labor intensive. I have a person that helps me with all that stuff. Um, but they're fairly inexpensive. To, here's a couple of them. I don't know if you can see my screen that well. Mm -hmm. But um, these go out and then the new one for print source is going out soon. So... I think that clients love to have a printed piece, mm -hmm. and um, but don't let it break your bank and don't let it stress you out. I think that one of the things is 
because it's so incredibly time consuming to have the database, get the labels printed, get the postage, all that stuff, it can take an inordinate amount of time. Right. So if it does that and you don't have somebody who can help you or you can't figure out a way to streamline it, then I would say it's not worth it. It's definitely not worth it if you can only do it once a year. Because, again, you're looking for consistency. It's like, here comes, mm. here's Surtex is coming up, and, oh, here's my postcard from Jennifer. Here comes Print Source. Here comes, like, and right. so postcard's like a reminder to come, an invitation to make an appointment. There's a purpose for it. But if you only do one <laughs> in July every year, no, there's, there's no... There's no residual that. Hilarious. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Jennifer. We're, we're laughing because I think it was Linda. Linda just said now she's going to start emailing you every three weeks. Yes, I love that. <laughs> yeah, you're going to start getting a lot of emails. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, I, I love to hear from artists. I really, really do. I hear I'm advice on... So far, I'm pretty oh. good at getting back to people. You let me know if I'm not. Okay. 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 Um, so I hear any um, more questions, you guys? I think I saw actually Vivane ask a million times and we just never got to it. She asked about what's the biggest pain for you from artists? Like what should we avoid doing? Mm -hmm. What what bothers you the most about not necessarily your artists, but maybe artists that are reaching out to you? You know, I don't, I, um, that sounds so Pollyanna. I don't think that there is a thing that bothers me. Like, okay. We're new, so I still have a ton of energy. I'm not burned out at all. Yeah. And we're small. So from my standpoint, I feel mm. flattered to hear from an artist. I feel like that's one of the biggest compliments that anybody would ever want to trust me with helping them with their career. That's a huge honor. So I would say the only thing that drives me insane is emails with two, with that are like 10 mag files, right? Yeah. But okay, if somebody, right. and don't write to me every day, but as Linda said, <laughs> write to me every three weeks or write to me every two weeks. But it's nice to hear from you and to hear what's new. I love it if you put me on your newsletter and you should do those newsletters. But I think that that's, you know, you want an agent who wants to hear from mm -hmm. artists, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, we have a question about you. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> I just knocked over my... Um, my yeah, so my son is 16. I live in Arlington, Massachusetts. And how did you become an agent? Oh, my gosh. So I, I'll i be 50 in April, which is amazing. Oh, so for about 20-something years, I was an art director um, buying art, mostly for kids' books, primarily. Um, I worked in New York. I went to Pratt, and I worked in New York. And I just fell in love with illustrators and illustration for decades. And so I was on the buying end for years and years and years. And um, let's see, in 2008, I had a business uh, called Pumpkin Pie, and it went along really well for about 15 years. And then 2008, it started to get slow. And um, I took a part-time job working for Lilla Rogers. And so I learned like the buying side of agenting, and then I learned sort of the nitty gritty and uh, the back end, and I really um, found that I love it. Mm. So it's wonderful. Great. All right. Well, um, I'm not seeing any questions right now. So are you guys ready to wrap up? Do you have anything else you want to say, Jennifer? No, I'm so glad to be invited to do this. We're so this happy really you're here. And yeah, actually, I just want to are. remind people, if you want to take a screenshot, here's Jennifer's website where you can sign up for her Advice for Artists newsletter. Um, and her Facebook and Instagram, please screenshot that. Um, and then also she has a class coming up with Modern Thrive. And here is the information for Modern Thrive. How to get an agent and do I really need one? So we talked about that a little bit today, but if you want in-depth information on how to snag an agent like Jennifer, <laughs> you'll want to sign up for this class on Modern Thrive. There's the link right there. It's March 16th through 18th. So go check that out too. Oh, that was so brilliant. Okay, and also, if you want to join our Facebook community, our Heart to Art Facebook, um, we are on Facebook at facebook.com, Heart to Art Talk. So you can look up Heart to Art Talk on Facebook in the groups. We're in Facebook groups. Okay. And a lot of people have been asking if we're going to put this video anywhere, and we actually 
um, put them in our Heart to Art Talk Facebook group. So if you want to refer back, you're going to want to join that group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Jennifer Nelson, for um, joining us today. We are so lucky to have you. And yes, you have, we are. You have been so incredibly generous with the information really that you've given generous. Really like, generous. Like, but mind blown. Yeah, I forget it. Like, <laughs> well, totally I really she crushed it, it today. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm almost always right here. Uh, you're thank awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're amazing. Thank and you so much. And if you're going to be in New York next week, come see us at Print Source. All right. Yay. You're right here. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to go. So thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks Thank again, Jennifer. You. And we'll see you guys soon. And um, go check out Jennifer's website and Instagram and Facebook. And definitely mm -hmm. check out her Modern Thrive class. Uh, I think that's going to be really great. And spots are filling up. Oh, yeah. Probably oh, yeah. as we hot, speak. Hot, hot thing to do right now. All right. And uh, we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Bye. Too. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for Join our Facebook group. Facebook.com slash groups slash heart to art talk.